Hello and welcome. So, in the first part of today's uh, lecture, you went into the lab and with the help of uh, Naveen Abhinit, uh, you saw the demonstration of imaging of a macro scale object in the lab with the help of a DSLR camera and a lens combination. Now, uh, what we wanted to illustrate uh, is the issue of imaging and how the lenses and the camera settings influence the images. Now, you might recall that we had discussed the generic imaging in any system where let us say I draw my object, I am just going to make a stick shape here and you have an optical system. Now, the optical system can be various, it often consists of lenses. Uh, now, uh, this optical system can consist of a lens, it can be a single lens, single thin lens, it could be a combination of different type of lenses. Uh, in the lab demonstration that you saw, it is a combination, uh, all the three lenses are actually combination of different type of lenses that are put together. So, it is a compound uh, lens system and, uh, and you have the ability to control uh, sometimes the focal length. For example, in the zoom lens, uh, you have the ability to control the focal length. Uh, of the lens you uh, by varying uh, let us say uh, by turning a knob in that case. Then you have uh, a camera right, or a recording or a sensor which records the images. So, um, there is one more thing that here which we will illustrate uh, which is the light falling on the object and the light being received by the optical system. So, as an abstraction, I can say that this entire thing consists of an object which needs to be imaged, an optical system, a sensor and some form of light and matter interaction. Now, um, the optical system can be various. Okay. Uh, it can be a lens, it can be a thin lens, it can be a single thin lens, it could be many lenses put together. Uh, it need not even be a lens all the time. Uh, for example, there are uh, uh, telescopes which use mirrors. Right. So, the optical system here can be various and it depends on the particular circumstance uh, of uh, the situation. The sensor here can be a camera that you are accustomed to or it could be some other sensor as well. But usually here most of the time we have what we have is uh, a camera of some sort. And then obviously you have the object and you have some sort of light matter interaction. So, some sort of light is falling on my object and this light is being uh, some sort of a electromagnetic radiation is being received by my optical system and processed through it and finally being recorded by my sensor. Now, in the optical system that we have um, there it can be you can have a various range of choices depending on the particular circumstance. In the lab today, we are going to look at macroscopic imaging using one of the most commonly used uh, combinations which is that of a DSLR camera and a lens that goes along with it. Uh, the big advantage of a DSLR camera is that it usually allows you to swap different type of lenses. So, you can uh, uh, take a prime lens, Naveen is going to show you in the video, uh, he has already shown you in the video a prime, uh, prime lens or you can swap out and have a zoom lens instead. Right? So, this gives you a significant advantage. You can also use different adapters and even have microscopic lenses uh, attached onto uh, a DSLR camera body. So, it affords you a very uh, strong uh, uh, ability to change between different setups. Um, now, in an optical system, for example, in one of the in the uh, in the DSLR lens and camera combination that we have we have shown you in the lab, the lens is such that the sensor or the camera body you can is can be can be used to control some of the settings. So, for example, if you wanted a different size of aperture, you can input the kind of aperture you want in the sensor uh, electronics and you the, the system will correspondingly change it in the optical system. Now, here I want to point out something that although this is one of the most widely used systems for large scale imaging, 
it is not the only one. Um, here the lens and the camera body are put together. That need not always be the case. Uh, for example, in a microscope, uh, in a regular commercial microscope, usually there will be a separate port for a camera and there will be a different port for the lens and they will be separated by a large dis distance. So, just because in this particular demonstration you are seeing a lens and a camera combination together, do not think that this is the only possible way. This is one of the ways, right. So, in your own experiment, whatever the need be, you will have to adapt like that. Now, um, one of the things we are going to show you uh, or we have shown you in the lab is to change the f number of a lens. Okay. Um, now, the f number is related to our aperture of a system. So, as my f number increases in this system, my aperture actually decreases. So, this is a number that I can control using my system and effectively what it is doing in the optical system is it is controlling my aperture. So, you cannot set the f number to any arbitrary value, there are a set of values that uh, you have access to in a DSLR lens and a sensor combination and when you do that, the aperture becomes a certain fixed value. Right? Um, so, let me do one more thing. I have what I have done is whatever you saw in the lab, I have made a PPT out of it and I will just quickly go over all the things and highlight some of the key issues uh, there. So, that we are able to understand everything better. So, in the lab session, one of the things Naveen is going to show you uh, is the effect of aperture. And this image, uh, which is not mine, and I have given the image credits at the bottom here, uh, the effect of different f numbers is shown. So, as you can see, this is f 1.4 and this is f 8.0. And it is sort of obvious what is happening. This is the area through which light can pass at f 1.4, and corresponding here, this is the area over which light can pass at an f number of 8. This f by is, this means this is the f number that is uh, being used. So, this is something that can be controlled. Uh, this is your aperture he, right here and this aperture is somewhere inside the lens and uh, it is not a front aperture or a back aperture, it is somewhere, somewhere inside and you can control it uh, in our demonstration it is somewhere inside and uh, you can control this uh, using the camera body. So, when we started the imaging, this is the first image and we can see that the f number here is f 5.3. So, when you input the number 5.3, this is again some, a number that you can control uh, from the camera body. The, the lens is such that it is motorized. So, the coupling is such that the moment you uh, input this number, the camera forces the, the lens to operate at f 5.3. And this is the image that you get, right? This is the object that was placed in front. You have this bright uh, blue letters saying experiment that are vi visible. And in the back, there is also some words, but you can see they are very hazy. They are not visible. Um, the light is enough. It is not a question of exposure time, although the exposure time here is also mentioned 1 by 200, uh, but and the ISO is also mentioned. But uh, it is not an issue of the light, it is how uh, at this particular point you do not, uh, you are not able to image the, the, uh, the letters in the back. So, we will see how this problem was addressed. Okay. So, now this is the same experiment uh, repeated at a different f number. So, you can see this is f 36 and uh, you can see the word experiment written here. And you can also read experiment, please stay away from the table at the back and you can also see this arrow and this both these two, uh, both this set of letters now has uh, become very, very clear 
in this particular image. But the image also has become very dark compared to the last one, isn't it? So this is a very bright image. The image, the object of the, in the behind is not very visible. In this particular case, as you just change only the f number and no other variable was changed, the to both the letters in the back and the front are now visible, but uh, the entire image has become very very dark. So to address this, uh, what Naveen and Abhinit do is to change your exposure time. So now the exposure time is up to 1 by 4 seconds, okay. earlier it is 1 by 200 seconds. So the moment the exposure time is changed, the image becomes bright because you have let in light for 1 by 4 seconds instead of 1 by 200 seconds. And now everything is here uh, is bright and clearly visible. So you can see that this is the same lens, nothing has been changed except for the aperture. So why does this happen? Uh, well, a higher aperture essentially uh, starts as we saw here, let me go back to this. So at very high aperture values, you are basically constraining the amount of light. So if you have a lens, you are constricting the light to enter through the very small cone. And this small gap that you have, this is a mechanical gap this small gap now starts to act more like a pinhole. As it acts more like a pinhole, everything starts to come into focus. Right? At a lower f numbers, you have a larger cone of light that is entering into my system. So the imaging is changed just by controlling not the lenses or the not the uh, not the lens type or even the placing of the lenses with respect to each other, but simply by the use of this aperture, right. Okay. Um, and here, this is a demonstration of what happens when you let too much light in. So now everything else is remaining constant. The exposure time has now been increased to 2 seconds and you can see that this is an overexposed image, it is so bright. So if you took this into image J or some other software which can read the values, you will see that all these places uh, which are very bright, all these places, they will be all saturated. Okay. So these will be saturated pixels all here. Uh, obviously almost all of the picture is saturated except for a few places, so I have just scribbled over here just to sort of show you one of the locations, right. And now uh, it is saturated enough that uh, it, this portion is not even readable. So uh, uh, now in order to uh, correct the system but keep these two numbers constant, what Naveen and uh, Avinit do is they now use a smaller ISO. Okay. So this value now also controls the amount of uh, value that is read by your pixel per photon. And, uh, you can see that by decreasing this number to 1000, earlier it was 12,800 which is a very large number, now it is down to 1000, you suddenly have um, everything back uh, not only in focus but the image is not ex excessively bright. So this shows you how you can control different variables in the lab using settings on your camera. Obviously, we have not been able to show you all different combinations, that is not the intent. The intent here is to show you one particular combination and uh, which is a very widely used combination of a DSLR uh, camera and its corresponding lenses and you can experiment with others if you want to. This camera again I am going to repeat is a color camera. Uh, this is often I have mentioned it before. Uh, often scientific cameras are monochrome um, where you might have to change the gain or uh, etc. in a slightly different way. Okay. Uh, so I hope uh, in this lab session you are able to get a feel of what happens in this optical system and how uh, variation in this optical, uh, in the optical system causes a significant change in the image that is recorded by your sensor. Right? And that was the purpose of this lab demonstration. So, uh, thank you very much and I will see you in the next class.